to push this thing, uh, uh, the, the uh, <coughs> conference coming up, uh, I want that mountain as the, the title. What is it that you'd like to uh, achieve? Uh, how many people would you like to bring? What's, the, what's your goal? That's what I want this mountain is all about. How, uh, what's your goal? How many people can you bring? And so we need to really push on that and do the best that we can. And so right now, as, as I preach to you, I'm going to give you just a thought of why we do what we do and why we got to be soul winners, why we try to, <clears throat> to lead people to Christ. Now, we live in a time when things are, are beautiful, if you would, right now in, in America, should I say, uh, in the sense of we have a lot of freedom still left, in a sense that uh, uh, most of us do not live in a little old shack somewhere. You have a bed, you have a refrigerator, you have somewhere to eat. I mean, we do all right. Amen? Amen. And sometimes you get up and you say, well, I think I'll have a bologna sandwich, and that's what you'll have. Sometimes you'll get up and you'll say, I think I'll go out and eat, and you go out and eat. Thank the Lord for that, because he's able to supply and give us. Amen? Amen. But the time will come when the Lord is going to come back. Uh, as, as we get closer to the second coming of Christ, it gets rough. The Bible talks about persecution, and uh, the, ch the church will be persecuted. Amen. It talks about apostasy, that is to say those that, that uh, teach wrong doctrines, and, and we're getting there. And no, no, I'm sorry, we are there, now we're Amen. getting there. We, we are long there already. Amen. But now, I, I want to give you just some thoughts today of why we do what we do. Notice the statement that is made here. If you're in chapter 4, 1 Peter, and verse, if you would, verse 17. He says this, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. It's us. Amen. We have to fear the Lord, people. Amen. Amen? Amen. We have to fear the Lord. The time has come when judgment has begun at the house of God. And if it first begun with us, what shall the end be of those that obey not the gospel? What shall the end be of those that obey not the gospel? Now, if you would, let's go to 1 Thessalonians, or excuse me, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And it gives you a little understanding of what's going to happen. Then I'm going to read the judgment seat of Christ in a minute. But I want you to notice something here in verse 7. 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. I want you to imagine Jesus Christ coming back with his angels. And he will come back someday. Amen. With his mighty angels. In flaming fire taking vengeance upon them that know not God and obey not the gospel. Now watch what it says. Obey not the gospel. Again, the same thing. To those that obey not the gospel. I see flaming fire... Uh, take inventions upon those that do not know God, especially those that do not obey the gospel, who shall be punished with an everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall, be, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints <clears throat> and to be admired in all them that believe because of, the, of our testimony among, among you was believed in that day. So he's going to come to be glorified of the saints. He's going to come in judgment, in flaming fires, taking vengeance upon them that know not God. The greatest sin a man can commit is not because he went out and got drunk. The, by the way, it is sin. I don't want you to Amen. misunderstand me. But that's not the greatest sin a man commits. The greatest sin a man can commit is not because he went out and, 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 and committed adultery. The greatest sin a man can commit is not because he went out and stole from, uh, uh, robbed the bank somewhere. The greatest sin we commit is when you and I refuse to receive Christ as our personal Savior. Amen. When we refuse to trust Christ as our Savior, that's the greatest sin. That's why men go to hell. Amen. See, I can, I, I can get saved because I, I, I can get drunk and get saved because... Uh, God will forgive my drunkenness, but if I die and never receive Christ as my Savior, I'm going to go to hell. Amen. That's Amen. the biggest sin I can commit, is not trusting Christ as my Savior. Not believing in Him, not obeying Him. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. And when you get there, we're going to start with verse, uh, with verse, uh, what, what verse am I on here? Verse 31. Verse 31. And so, one of these days, the Lord is coming back. 
One of these days, we're going to stand before the throne. That's why we try to witness and try to get people saved. Because one of these days, the Lord's going to come back. We're going to have to stand before the throne. And when we do, we're going to be judged. We're going to be judged by our actions. Some people say, well, your works don't count. The, the Bible don't say that. Our works will count. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's, why, that's why in Revelation 14, 13, the Bible says this. Uh, and their works follow them. Amen. Oh, boy, that ain't good. Now, you got two choices. The Bible says some men's sins go before them. That means you got saved, you confess them, but you send them up to heaven to get forgiven. He says some men, they're going to follow after. That's right. I don't want them to follow after me. I want to send them ahead of time. Amen? Amen. Uh, before, before I have to meet the Lord. Now, let's look at verse 31. Verse 31 says this. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. Same thing as, uh, same thing as in 2 Thessalonians. He'll come with his glory and his angels uh, uh, with him. Then, sh then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations. That's all of us. I don't care what nation nationality you are. You're going to stand before God. Before him are going to stand all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. Well, that, I, I think that's going to be scary. Amen. Could you imagine Jesus standing before the Lord? And he says to you, you're one of the goats. Man, that wouldn't be good. And he shall set the sheep at his right at his right hand and the goats to the left. That's why I did. When I go to church, I never sit to the left. I always sit to the right. Amen. Then shall the king say unto them at the right hand, Come, ye blessed of my, of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now let's stop right there. I want to give you a thought. Someday we're all going to stand before the Lord. Amen. When we stand before the Lord, he's going to separate the sheep from the goat. Now all of us uh, would say, well, brother so-and-so, man, he's such a faithful man. Boy, he's such a good guy. I think he'll be in heaven someday. But we don't know that. Only God knows the heart. Amen. So keep your heart right with God. Amen. Right. Don't worry about men. Make sure your heart's right with God. Amen. And so here's you're going to stand there. You know why I don't let uh, uh, anybody keep me out of church? For example, if a person doesn't like me in the church, I don't care. I'm going to go to church. Why? Because I'm not, I cannot say to you, oh, well, they didn't like me, so I didn't go to church. I don't care. I'm going to go to church because i got to answer to God in the end. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm not going to have to answer to you. i got to answer to God. My pastor used to say, if you go to church and you know there's a couple of hypocrites there, say, screw over hypocrites, I ain't going to hell for you. I'm going to heaven. Amen? And the truth is, that's the way we ought to feel. Amen. Now watch what he says. So, uh, could, and by, by the way, a child or a baby or a, a young kid, they're saved. Mm -hmm. God's not going to send them to hell. That's right. So let's say you and your, your daughter or your son are standing there, and, and here you are at the judgment seat, and God says to you, get over to the left hand. And you start walking to the left hand, but your child's going to stay on the right hand. How sad, amen? amen? He's going to tell the angels, you take that little boy and you put him on this side. And while mommy and daddy are going to hell, that child's going to go on to heaven. I'm saying to all of you guys, we got to do right because someday we want to go with our children. Amen. Amen. We want to make sure that we go to the right hand. Now he says to, to us, he's going to put them at the right hand in verse 35. <clears throat> excuse me, at the right hand, verse 34, I'm sorry. Then shall the king say to them at the right hand, come you blessed of my father, inherit the, the kingdom prepared to you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry. Now watch this. He's going to judge their works. Some people say, oh, your works don't matter. You're not saved by works. Well, you're not saved by works. But I got news for you. You're not going to be sinning and going to heaven. Amen. I, I mean, I didn't get saved by works. But I know that I'm, my works will be judged. He goes on to say, <clears throat> excuse me, where am I at here? I was a hungered and you gave, and, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and, and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Now watch what he's doing. He's telling you what you did in your lifetime. I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty. I was in prison. You visited me. I mean, he's saying you were there for me all this time. Then shall the righteous answer, saying, Lord, when saw, thee, when, when saw we thee uh, a hungered, 
and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave you to drink. He said, uh, when saw we uh, uh, thee a stranger, and took, thee, and took thee in, or naked, and clothing, or saw thee uh, sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall say unto them, Verily I say unto you, insomuch as you did unto one of these least of my what? Brethren, I always remember that, and I'm going to give you a thought in a minute. Uh, you have done it unto me. He said, as much as you've done it unto one of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Amen. Now, let me, let me explain something to you. I am not against uh, giving food away. We've done this at the church where we were able to get uh, food from the food bank. We gave, to, we, we gave and we gave to anybody. Uh, uh, but the truth is, we don't have a command to feed the world. Did you know that? You can't find me in the Bible where the Bible says that we're supposed to go out and, and, and feed the world. It doesn't say that to us. But it does say to you, you better take care of your brother in Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, when they said to Jesus, when they said to Jesus, your mom and your brothers, they're out here looking for you and your sisters. And he said, who is my brother? Who is my mother? Who is my sister? He said, those that believe in me, the same as my brother, my sister. So understand, my command is to, first of all, take care of those in the church. Amen. To look out for them. He said, in so much that one of the, somebody, uh, you say, but they're in prison, Pastor. So was Paul, the Apostle Paul. Amen. Amen. He was in prison. He said, but so much he said, as you did to one of these, least my brethren, you did it unto me. So our works are going to follow us. Our first responsibility is the church. Now, there's nothing wrong, and I believe God's pleased with it. If we help somebody along the way out there in the street, somebody's hungry, and you give them a, a, a taco or a burrito, nothing wrong with that. Amen? Thank, thank the Lord for that. I'm, I'm not against that at all. When we were giving away food, I helped. I went ahead and helped and took food to people. I didn't mind, but I'm just simply saying God expects you and I, listen to me, to take care of each other in the church. Amen. To provide for one another. Now, this church has done a good job in that area, so I don't have too many complaints. When it comes to helping people, you guys have been excellent in trying to help people all the time. I, I can say that and tell the truth. But then I want you to notice the next group. In the next group we find here, is so, so he says, what did we see? He said, when you did this to what? Oh, my brethren, you did it unto me. Then shall, they, then shall he say unto them on the left hand, depart from you, curse, in your everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, and you, did, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. By the way, these people were not church people, so they could care less about the church. The only ones that ought to care about the church and about the brethren are Christians. Amen. But if you never got saved, you never helped. You weren't part of the church. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me, and you clothed me not. He says, uh, sick, excuse me, sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Now notice that he says sick and in prison. Can, can I, can I kind of uh, shock some of you real quickly? Uh, uh, the other day I was at uh, uh, Sister Van Horn's, and she began to say, well, you know, Pastor, uh, so-and-so came to see me. Boy, I was so glad that they came to see me. She was happy that people had come by to see her. You know, and of course, uh, uh, name, the, uh, name some of you that are here tonight, name you. Well, so-and-so came to see me, and so-and-so came to see me. Jesus said to these people, I was sick, and you never visited me. That's sad. Amen. Amen? That's sad. Because someday we're going to have to give an account to the Lord for Sister Van Horn. You listen to me, I'm trying to be honest with you and tell you the truth. Someday you're going to stand before the Lord and give an account that you never visited Sister Bedhorn. How long you've known her? How long has she been your friend? Amen? I'm talking to some of you that have been here for years, not, just, not the newer people. You don't know her as much, but some of you, that been, you, you've known her, she was your friend. You shook her hand, you talked to her and all that stuff. Amen. Especially when she was up and around and doing good, you knew her. And at one time, have you gone by just to let her know you're praying for her? Amen? Amen. Now, let me continue. I just, thought I, I just thought of that when I was reading that. I thought I better make sure we understand that. Then he says, I was sick, and you didn't, you didn't visit me, uh, you, and you visited me not. <clears throat> then, shall he say, then shall they answer unto him, saying, 
Lord, when saw the uh, we uh, we a hunger, or a thirst, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, uh, and did not minister unto thee? Now look at the word minister, because that's when you go and try to help in some way. You minister unto thee. He said, then shall, I, uh, then shall he answer unto them, saying, uh, Verily I said unto you, insomuch as you did uh, not into one of these least, uh, least of these, uh, you did not unto me. Uh, these, and these shall go away into everlasting fire, uh, into excuse me, everlasting punishment, for, uh, uh, but the righteous unto eternal life. Now I want you to notice both times. First of all, in verse 41, he sends him to hell. He said, it's a place prepared for the devil and his angels. God didn't want you to go to hell. Amen. It was for the devil and his angels. Right. You go there because of disobedience to the Lord and not wanting to be saved. And then, of course, you. Uh, and the other part, he says in verse 46, these shall go into everlasting punishment. You know what everlasting punishment means? That means no ending, no ending to your punishment. Amen. Uh, you go on and on and on for eternity. Now, uh, for eternity. Now, let me just uh, tell you a few things tonight that I hope we understand. The responsibility of the church is to do the best we can to help others. Amen. Amen. First of all, now I said, first of all, is the church. Uh, we have to do the best we can because our works are going to follow us. So, and someday when you stand before the Lord, you can't say, well, the pastor, or the you know, God, or, the, uh, or Lord, you know, when, when I went to church, our pastor, boy, he was a door knocker. What about you? Our pastor, he witnessed to people, but yeah, but what about you? See, it's not about the pastor. We all have an account, give an account for ourselves to the Lord. Amen. I'm not going to give an account for you to the Lord outside of what I taught you. If I don't teach you the truth, then I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. But I got to teach you the truth, and that's about all I can do. But I'm going to give an account. If I don't teach you the truth, then I'm going to be in trouble with the Lord. In the meanwhile, I got to teach you what God says. Amen. So watch carefully then. Uh, when you stand before the Lord, he's going to ask you, how did you do in prayer? How did you do in this? How did you do? I mean, different areas of your life, and you're going to have to give an answer to someone that already knows the answer. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. I mean, have you ever seen where a guy goes to, to, to the police department and they sit him down and they begin to question him, but they already know he did it. They just want to try to get some out of him. Come on, confess, confess here because you know you did it. And they're trying to get a confession out of him. Amen? You seen that? Well, the truth is God already knows when he begins to judge us and he begins to deal with us, it's not going to be like God's going to be sitting up there saying, man, I hope they tell me the truth, because i like to find out what kind of person this is. He already knows. He just Amen. needs a confession. Amen? And when we do go to hell, or a man that does go to hell, is going to go to hell realizing what he had done or what he did to the Lord. The damage that he caused, the bad things that he did. I'm saying to you, why do we try to win people to Christ? Because it is a responsibility God gave us. Amen. Amen. And we know someday there's going to be a judgment. Someday we're going to have to stand before the great throne of God. And those that are not found in the book of life are going to be cast into a lake of fire. How am I going to get their name in the book of life? When they get saved, their name goes into the book of life. But if we're not going to lead them to the Lord, then those men will not go, will not go there. How would you like to stand next to your brother or your sister or your, uh, your cousin, whoever, somebody you know real good? Uh, your best friend or somebody, one of your neighbors that you see all the time and you say, hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. But you never invite him to church. You never uh, prepared a, a good gospel presentation to give him. And here that man's going to stand next to you at the judgment seat of Christ and, and, and say to you, you never told me. How come you never told me about the Lord? Amen. I decided a long time ago, and I've done it at least two or three times, that I was going to knock my, my, my block there, people that are around me. They've all been invited to church. I decided I'm not going to let these people go to hell, and I didn't do something about it, try to witness to them, try to share the gospel with them. Uh, and they know I'm a pastor. Most of them know I'm a pastor. Amen? So I'm saying I go around do, I do, knocking those doors, inviting people to services, inviting people to church. I've done that at least four or five times since I moved in there because we changed so many neighbors, uh, seem to change every so often. And I'm saying to you, what about your neighbor? What about that friend that you've never said to them? Can I ask you a question? If you die today, do you know you're going to go to heaven? And when they don't know, you present the gospel to them. Let me show you how to get saved. Let me tell you. Now, if they say, well, I tried, and they said, no, I don't want to hear that, that's up to them. But Amen. you tried. You gave it a shot. 
Amen. At the, at, the, at the judgment seat of Christ, you don't have to worry about it because you did the best you could. Now remember, he said, in the book of Ezekiel, he says, if I say unto the, uh, unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. But you don't do anything to warn them. He said, his blood will I require it in your hands. Amen. 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 Now when Paul preached to the Corinthians church and they got upset with him and they asked him to leave, you know what the, the apostle Paul said? He said, all right, your blood be upon your own heads. I did the best to preach to you the counsel of God. You know, he wanted to preach to them, but they wouldn't listen. So he said, okay, let the blood be on your own head. In the New Testament, we're told to be witnesses. Otherwise, we're going to be responsible for those that die and don't go to heaven. Amen. I mean, I know I can't witness to every single person in Salinas, but I can witness to those that are close. I can witness to those that I see every day. I can witness to those that see me uh, and, 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 know, and know my name. I told you the other day, I go pick up pills sometimes for my... For my diabetes, I'll go, I'll go to, the, they'll call me and they'll say, uh, your, your pills are ready or whatever. So I go get my meds, as they call them. So I go in there and I stand there. And uh, uh, sometimes we just, even, I don't even get to the uh, deal already. And the lady will be doing something. And she'll go, oh, Mr. Palomo, yeah, we'll, we'll get you in a minute. And they already know me. That person that already knows me, that person that feels comfortable calling me Mr. Palomo, she had to at least get a track sometime along the way. Amen? All I'm saying, people, is this. There is a judgment throne coming someday. Amen. We're going to have to stand before the Lord someday. We're going to have to answer to God someday. And what's our answer going to be? I was comfortable. I didn't miss the services. That's great. But did you witness to anybody? Did you share the gospel? Did you try to keep your friends and your family from going to hell? Did you do your best? Now, usually on Sunday nights, I try not to preach on this, but I got to thinking, we got a big responsibility as a church. I don't know what the end of the church here will be, but we got a big responsibility. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> i give you an example. My brother Ruben, and uh, I think my nephew Carlos too, they door knock in Delano. They don't have a church to go to. They don't have a, they, they see our videos. They don't have a church to go to right now. You know what they do with people? They give them a track, and some of you know what I'm talking about. There are, on some of our tracks, there's a little thing you can scan with your phone, and you can see the services. Mm -hmm. So they tell them, scan that, and you can see the services uh, out from Salinas. You can see and you can see that there. Now, some of you, some of you won't even share a video with someone. Won't even recommend the. The deal with some, when we ought to be using the, uh, the, the YouTube channel to, to share with someone, to give it to someone, to let someone know what, what, what we're doing here in Salina. I'm just simply saying, people, we need to get back to serving the Lord. I mean, it, you, you're so, uh, uh, how would I call it, unconcerned that we can't even push a thumbs up on the, 